like to begin this morning with meditation and for Pray. those that have your cell phone if you would be so kind to turn them off for the next few moments now we are first John 1 and 9 assuring that we are on one accord in preparation God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. We come this morning thanking you for this day that you've given us to assemble ourselves one more time to worship you in truth and in spirit. And we thank you, Father, for growing us up to the point, dear Heavenly Father, of worshiping you in obedience to your holy word. And we ask, Father, for your anointing to be upon our worship service, that it would be holy and acceptable in your eyesight. And Father, we pray, dear God, for those who have joined us by way of broadcast, Asking, Father, if you would just touch their hearts right now. Open their minds up to Heavenly Father, whereas that they may be able to serve you with a whole heart. We ask this. And as we lift our voices to sing unto you, Father, we pray that you would anoint our voices, and that it would be holy and acceptable in your eyesight. But we ask it in Christ's name, it's our prayer. Amen. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I lose my direction, you're the compass for me. Shadows on my feet when I'm all alone. The hand is there to hold. There's no place here for her time. Still on, she came through the shame that blushed her face. Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. 
But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. For may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Steady to show thyself approved unto God. A work may need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And he shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. The word of truth this morning is going to come from a number of passages of scripture. And the subject of our lesson in peace, repeat after me. Walking right with God. Amen. God want you to make up in your mind today that you're going to stop playing. Amen. He wants you to stop playing. Amen. See, too many Christians are playing and have not become serious about their walk with God. God wants you to walk right with him. See, God does not like carelessness. Amen. And too many Christians are careless. They are careless in their walk. Amen. They're careless. They're careless in their words. See, careless words can condemn. Hmm. Amen. Yeah. And we got some references here to look at this morning. Turn over in your Bibles to Matthew 12th chapter. And let's see what the Holy Spirit is teaching us this morning about careless words. Words that we use carelessly can come back to bite us. Amen. Here in Matthew, the 12th chapter. Beginning with verses 35, 36, and 37. We're going to look at those three verses. Amen. Careless words can condemn. Are we all there? Amen. Let us read. A good man read. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringing forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringing forth evil things. Stop right there. Now, a good man who have made up in his mind that he's going to start walking right with God, guess what? In his mind, in his thinking, is going to come good things. Now, he says here, but the evil man, who decided not to walk right with God. Amen. We're talking Christian folks. Then out of his thinking, it's going to be evil. And God say, look, it's time. I'm giving you chance after chance after chance. Why don't you come? Why don't you choose? Choose. And that's all life is, is a choice. Verse 36, let us read. But I say read. But I, but I say, say unto you, that every idle word that men shall, shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the, in the day of judgment. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by the words thou shalt be condemned. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now, there is a such thing as called hung by the tongue. Yes, indeed. Amen. See, you can hang your own self by the words that come out your mouth. Yes, indeed. See, I didn't say this. The Holy Spirit has told us in the word. Yes. See, God says, put a stop, watch out, your mouth. <laughs> See, some of us, too many Christians, a lot of Christians need to put a stop, watch on their mouth. <laughs> Amen. Y'all know what a stop, watch is. Put a timer on it. <laughs> and we got some references here. Turn to Psalms 141. Let's see about this stopwatch. <clears throat> see, everything you want to know is recorded right in Scripture. We got two references here. Psalm 141 and then we're going to go to James 119. 
Psalms 141. Verse 3. Here a little and there a little. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Are we all there? Let us read. Set, read. Set a watch, O oh Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Amen. Set a watch. Oh, my mouth. That's right. And keep the door of my lips. All right, run over to James 119. Let's see what the Holy Spirit has revealed through James. Amen. So now David said, Lord, help me to watch what I say. You see, we can say a whole bunch of things in our emotions. Yes, indeed. And then come back to regret it later. Yes, indeed. See, when a person is emotional, whenever, I'm going to tell you what happened. When you have a, an emotional person, that person is just like a tumbleweed. Amen. Just like a tumbleweed. They do not think. God wants you to start thinking the way he thinks. Amen. Now here... The Holy Spirit has revealed through James, first chapter, verse 19. Let us read. Wherefore, read. Wherefore, Wherefore my beloved brethren, brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Amen. Amen. Underline slow to speak. He said, be swift to hear and slow to speak. See, when you slow to speak, you allow the Holy Spirit to govern your thoughts. You allow Bible doctrine to come forth when you slow to speak. But when you're swift to speak, your emotions take over. Amen. And you go on what you feel, not on what's right. Amen. Emotions. See, there's a whole lot of folks in California that lined it up to try to stop the bus from coming into this country with a bunch of children. But they forgot that their fathers came over here just like them. That's right. <laughs> My Lord. See, they forgot mm -hmm. how quick we easily to forget. Come on now. Come on. Because, see, you remember the time they was coming from Europe. Over here That's by the boatloads. All right. Nobody stopped them. Nobody stopped them. Amen. Right. And they wouldn't have felt good if somebody was out there trying to stop you from coming into this. Right. Just think if the Indians had to line it up and say, Look, y'all can't come in our country. That's right. That's right. See, emotions loud, folks. He said, Be swift to hear. Slow to speak and slow to get angry. Mm -hmm. See, a person who talks too much, and you got a whole bunch of Christians that talk too much, All right. opens the door to selfishness and carelessness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Go to Proverbs 13. A person that talks too much opens the door for selfishness. Amen. And carelessness. People be saying a whole bunch of stuff that ain't true. Just come up with something. And I be looking, I say, man, where did you get that from? Allowing Satan to take over yes. because you have became emotional yes. on how you feel. All right. First of all, understand 
we're just passing through this life. God created everything. Amen. Amen. And he put man here. All right, here in Proverbs 13, we're going to look at verses 1, 2, and 3. Let us read. How long read? Wait, excuse me. I'm sorry. I said Proverbs. I'm in Psalms. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Amen. Proverbs. Proverbs. I was in Psalms 13. All right. Are we all there? Yes, sir. Amen. Let us read a wise son. Read. A wise, wise son, son hear it. His scorner. But a scorner hear it not rebuke. Stop right there. We got some key words to look at. It says a wise son. Pay attention, son. Hear it, his father's instructions. Yes. But a scorner heareth not rebuke. Now, what is a scorner? Underline that. Mm -hmm. A scorner is an arrogant person that never admits he's wrong. Oh, my Lord. Have you ever ran across somebody like that? See, when you try to tell them what's right, they try to make all kind of excuses that they can't see themselves. See, that's an arrogant person. That's a scorner. An arrogant individual that never admits when they're wrong. See, they never admit they're wrong. And we got a whole bunch of scorners that's Christians. We got scorners in our families. Amen. Yes. They are arrogant and never admit that they're wrong. Now, let me tell you what happens. Now, y'all get this. A lot of scorners know the word of God. Yes, they do. Amen. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. But don't realize that it is a satanic characteristic hmm. see Satan knows the word of God one of our angels the top angels Satan knows the Bible Satan knows what the father has said Satan knows what Jesus has said Satan knows but guess what you know the characteristic that's played out in the human race is that Satan don't apply none of it. Hmm. Hmm. And it's played out in humans. A lot of Christians know the Bible, but they don't apply it. <laughs> that is a satanic characteristic. And that individual has become a tool for Satan. And they don't even know that they become a tool for Satan. Because they're going to take what they know, amen, and going to become antagonistic, which is, again, a satanic characteristic. Because Satan does not, see, Satan does not love God. Satan does not love Jesus. Because Jesus, God says, for the one that loves me, is the one that's going to obey me. Amen. That's how you can tell whether or not a person loves the Lord or not. They're going to obey God. See, the one that does not obey God does not love him. See, it's not about feelings. See, take that F-E-E-L and kick it out of the door. It's not about feelings. It's about obedience. And only the love for God is what's going to change you. When you start obeying God, that is the love of God. That's the love for God. Yes. When you start obeying him, when you start obeying him, you're going to put forth an effort to change. Because you put God first in everything. All right, verse 2. Let us read. A man shall eat, read. A man shall eat good 
by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat balance. Three, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. He that open wide his lips shall have destruction. See, a person that talks too much open wide their mouth. Amen. Have y'all ever heard that expression? He put his foot in his mouth. She put her foot in her mouth because she talks too much. He that keepeth his or her mouth is wise. But the minute you step on a, the toe of a fool, he going to let you know it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. He going to let you know it. Amen. And if you say you people, he sure going to let you know it. Put a group of black folks together and come in there and say, you know, you people, oh, it's on. <laughs> what you mean, you people? <laughs> See, walking right with God develops a walk of carefulness. Carefulness, yes, sir. Walking right with God right. develops a walk of carefulness. Carefulness. Okay. Carefulness is being attentive. A careful forethought to potential danger. Something that's going to be an error. Or some that's going to cause harm. See, you know, a whole bunch of folks has carelessly went to bed and burned up their house. <laughs> Amen. A lot of cigarettes have burned down their house. And if they're in an apartment, they didn't burn down their house and the next the neighbor's house too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sometimes 17 families is out is out in the streets all because somebody went to sleep with a cigarette in them. <laughs> or a candle that fell over. Or something left on the stove in the fire going. Amen. Now, I'm not sure if that food truck up in New York or wherever it was that blew up was an accident or was it carelessly? Was it carelessness? But something think about it. Two women in a food truck blew themselves up. Amen. Now, this popular talk show called uh, The Talk Show. Huh? <laughs> What's this talk show that comes on with Oprah Winfrey? The View. The View, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, a, Who a, a Whoopi Goldberg, yeah. yeah okay. The View. The Whoopi. See, I come to understand there was a young lady on there yeah. who was... Going with a gentleman for a while, and she decided to leave him because he, she found out he wasn't a Christian. Amen. And they was raking her over the coals on why she did it. Amen. And to my understanding, nobody came to her defense, but I have to admire the young lady. You know why? Because she was obedient to the word of God. Obedient to the word of God. Well, that gold tooth is attracted her but after he would not conform you got to go that's right amen that's right and i have to remember, i have to give my i have to take my hat off to her. but nobody said anything on the on the view about the word of god what did god say see basically she was doing this young man a favor and herself too run over to second corinthians 6:14 see the holy spirit told this young lady Amen. On what to do. And the Holy Spirit, and, and, and if a whole lot of young ladies and young men would just follow the word of God, it'll keep them out of trouble. Now here, why I say I have to admire this young lady on the view to kick 
Willie D to the curve. Based on verse 14 of chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians. Are we all there? Let us read. Be ye not read. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? Amen. Now just think. He's an unbeliever and she's a believer? Amen. See, see, and they was trying to tell her, well, you can't help who you fall in love with. Wait a minute, hold up. Obedience, it boils down to obeying God. God said, don't get hooked up with an unbeliever. You know why? Because a young lady, the Bible also says to obey your husband. Now, if your husband is an unbeliever and you bringing up children in that union, you want to go to church and he say, look here, I don't want my children going to church. Well, there's a conflict right there. There's a conflict right there. Because he don't want his kids going to church and you want your children to go to church. Amen. Amen. He said, I don't want no Bibles in my house. Now you are a Christian. Amen. And he's stopping you from reading your Bible because he don't want no Bibles in the house. Now the word of God told you to obey him, right? Amen. So now you're in a dilemma. What business does unrighteousness do with righteousness? No, no. That's why God say don't be equally yoked with unbelievers. Amen. I don't care how good looking they are. And fine they is. See, that's one of the first questions I asked when I met a young lady. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Amen. And if she said yes and I watched a little bit, then we can go. Amen. But if she wasn't, you know, then go on about your business. See, obedience to the word of God is what makes you grow. And God will promote you when he sees that you're ready. Amen. We have a reference here. The Holy Spirit is shared with us. In Matthew 25, 21, we always want to, want to be promoted. Start obeying the word of God. Start applying the word of God. And then guess what? In due time, God will promote you. He will promote you when he sees that you're ready. Here in verse 21, let us read. His Lord read. His Lord shall say unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. See, we all want to hear those words when we get to heaven. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. See, if you're faithful in this life and obeying God and keeping his word and serving him, guess what? He said, look here now, you was in that testing stage for 80, 90 years, 100 years. Look here, come on in yes. because you passed the test. I'm going to make you rule over many. Come on, Come on in and enjoy the festivities of the Lord. Now, word of caution. Never try, and y'all get this, to promote yourself for a promotion. <laughs> See, it's a whole lot of Christians try to promote themselves for a promotion on their jobs. Amen. They call sucking up to the boss. <laughs> Amen. Sleeping with the boss. <laughs> Young ladies. See, I saw a lot of this when I was in college. Here I was in this class. 
scratching my head, going to the library all the time, trying to study hard, and this young lady come in with fishnets, stockings, high heels, no book, no pen and paper. Sit on the front row. Cross her legs. Don't she look good? You got an A. <laughs> and there I did go. Barely got a C. <laughs> Amen. See, I didn't look good enough. <laughs> Amen. But I had to admire one professor that I had. That was another young lady that tried that same thing. And he enjoyed the festivities. And she got an F, and she got upset. And at the end of the school year, and he got up in front of the class, he said, now didn't I tell everybody that I'm not gonna take nothing away from you and I ain't gonna give you nothing? Well, she chose to get up every day and leave out of here. She chose not to do her work. She chose to do what she did. Well, I did what I did. But I wasn't gonna give her nothing. I'm going to give her what she made. She made her up, and that's what she got. And the whole class just cheered <laughs> because we was talking behind her back. To me. Now, see, that's not right. That's wrong for her to do this. And here we scratching our heads trying to get a good grade. But that professor, I had to take my hat off to him. Amen. See, a lot of young ladies go to college thinking that they can get by on their back. No. It catch up with you. Never promote yourself for a promotion. Let's look at Psalm 75 and see what this say. Don't try to promote yourself, Christians. Just do the right thing in the right way at the right time and with the right motive every single time, no matter how big or how small it is. God sees everything yes, indeed. and just because it don't happen when you think it should happen guess what god is watching yes, he is. and he you. don't never sleep Thank you, Lord. all right here in psalm 75 let's look at verses 5 6 and 7 let us read lift not read lift not your horn on high not, not with a, a stick neck stop right there he said don't lift up your horn <laughs> Too many folks is trying to promote themselves. That's right. That's lifting right. up their own home. And then 6 says, what? For, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's see what the Holy Spirit says in 1 Peter 5. Turn to it. See, you don't worry about the promotion. You just do what's right. That's right. That's right. Do what's right. And let me tell you, God sees it. And if you do what's right, every single time with the right motive, then verse 6 of chapter 5, of first Peter gonna come into play. What does it say? Humble read. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may do what? Exalt you in due time. See, you ain't got to worry about that. God sees it. And guess what? When God opened the door for you, can't nobody shut it. Now on the other hand, if God shut that door, nobody can open it. Walking right with God develops a walk of carefulness. Now, when you don't walk right with God, it develops all an act of carelessness. And you know what carelessness is? And y'all don't give y'all don't learn nothing else this morning. Mm. Carelessness is a form of disobedience to God. Yes, it is. And lack of concern to the details which can destroy you. Mm. Mm. Let's look at a few verses here. Go to Leviticus, Leviticus. 10. Leviticus 10. Verse 1. Leviticus 10. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1
10, 1. And then we're going to go to 1 first, first Kings. And then we're going to end up in Matthew 25. Leviticus. Carelessness is a form of disobedience to God. Yes. And lack of concern to details. See, a person that go to bed with a cigarette in the bed, burn his house up, did not take into consideration that it could happen. See, I know this guy, he was a mechanic. And back in the day, there's instructions when you go to the gas to uh, uh, fill up your car, turn your car off before you fill up. Amen. <laughs> Simple, right? Amen. Well, mechanics used to take gasoline and put it in a bucket and clean parts with gasoline because it cleans the parts real good. But that's not a very good idea. <laughs> Amen. Because that mechanic was smoking <laughs> and didn't realize that there, at some point, there's a flash point on gas that's coming up, the vaporizing. And he thumped the cigarette and blew himself up. <laughs> Did not pay attention, wasn't concerned to the details. He had an open bucket of gasoline. If you sit to the side, you can see the vapors coming up. And some mechanics have done this, and I've seen it happen, can take a cigarette and throw it in there real fast and it'll put it out. Won't, won't do that. But if you go real slowly, it'll poof, because you hit that flash point. See, that flash point. And that's where it, it explodes. Amen. Amen. Carelessness. Carelessness. Yes. To the details <laughs> can blow you up. <laughs> Amen. Now let's look at an individuals here that was carelessness. Nadab was careless. Let us read. And Nadab read. And Nadab and Abedu, son of Aaron, took either of him censers and put fire therein and put censers and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. See, God is a God of order. And he wants things done, a right thing, in a right way. At the right time, and with the right motive. Now, Nadab, the sons of Aaron, Guess what? Uh, if you look at Leviticus 6, go to 6 chapter, verse 12. See, this is what was not supposed to happen. Here, you're going to see what happened here in verse 12. And just follow along with me of the 6th chapter of Leviticus. It says, and the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. And this is the kicker right here. It shall not be put out. Amen. See, the fire should never be put out, signifying God is with them all the time. But now, these children of Aaron, amen, that's hard-headed, that's going to do it their way, going to take some coals and put some incense and going to try to sacrifice the Lord, say, uh, uh no, no. Poof, that fire jumped on them and killed them. Blew them up. See, God back in the day didn't play. When he said do something a certain way, he meant exactly that. See, we are blessed to be in the church age. That's right. Amen. Because many of us would not be standing here today if we was back in the Old Testament time. He said do something a certain way, he meant exactly that. Now, let's see another careless accident. No, I ain't going to use the word accident. Go to 1 Kings 20. Carelessness. 
First Kings chapter 20. We're going to look at verses 35 through 43. Ahab. Amen. Was careless. Chose to disobey God. All right. Are we all there? First Kings 20th chapter. Starting at verse 35. Read until I tell you to stop. And a certain man read. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor in the word of the Lord. Smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. Then said he unto him, because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Stop right there. <laughs> See, he was disobedient. The prophet said, look, man, smack me in my face. Oh, no, I'm not going to hit you. You're a prophet. Okay, because you refuse. A lion going to eat you up. <laughs> now, here come another gentleman. Starting at verse 37. Let's read. Then he found, read. Then he found another man and said, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him so that he was smitten and he wounded him. And the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way and disguised himself with ashes upon his eyes. And as the king passes by and cried unto the king, and he said, Thou servant went out in the midst of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside and brought man unto me, and said, Keep this man. If any means be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be. Thyself has decided to stop right another way. What? What did Ahab say? Ahab said, it's your fault, man. You got what was coming to you. <laughs> Amen. You got what was coming to you because you didn't follow instructions. The man said, look here, you got to watch this man. Don't let him get away. And he got away. So you got what was coming to you. That's what Ahab told, him, told the prophet. But he didn't know who the prophet was. Amen. Now let's see. Verse 41. And he hasted, read. And he hasted and took the ashes away from his face. And the king of Israel discerned him that he was of the prophets. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, because thou hast let go of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his life. And the king of Israel went to the house heavy and displeased and came to Samaria. Amen. In other words, that gentleman that God had delivered in his hands was over in verse 33. Look at verse 33. Ben died. Verse 33. See, God said, kill all them people. But no, you wanted to make a covenant with the king. Verse 33 and 34. That I told you to destroy. Because of money involved. You let the king live. And because of that, a life for a life. He gonna live since you wanted him to live, but you gonna die. <laughs> See, carelessness is a form of disobedience to God. Amen. And lack of concern to details. Now let's see what this lack of concern to details here in Matthew 25. One of our very familiar passages of scripture. Amen. And we're going to look at verses 1, 2, 13. Pay close attention to Matthew 25 because you know a lot of young ladies need to know this. Not just young ladies but men too. Very important lesson here. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Are we all there? See, 
carelessness. See, when I was in school, I kept, because the way I was brought up, it's better to have and don't need than to need and don't have. Mm -hmm. And I always kept pens with me and my pencils. And I'm very particular about that. But a whole bunch of folks in school did not care about their <laughs> things, could not keep a pen or a pencil. Amen. Right, let me borrow one of you, but I said, no, did you have one just like I did at the beginning of the school year? Where's yours? <laughs> huh? See, I got mine. Where's yours? Hmm? Because you careless. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Didn't you start out like I started out? Where is it? It's because you're careless. See, one of my co-workers wanted to borrow my badge to get back in. I said, look here, this picture on this badge does not look like you. <laughs> this is my badge. Where's your badge at? No, I don't have it. Well, you're in trouble. Because <laughs> you ain't getting mine. No, you careless. <laughs> Rap, you just mean. Well, I'm just going to be mean. <laughs> Amen. See, see, I was on a road trip, and because I was brought up to have and don't need and need and don't have, we were going to Oklahoma, and it was burning hot here in Houston. And I had my coat, my quilt, my pillow, my stocking cap, gloves, everything. And they said, Rap, where you going with all that stuff? But it was hot, by 90 degrees here in Houston. I told them, I said, well, it's better to have and don't need it than to need and don't have. Had my umbrella. Rap, you don't need all that stuff. Okay. Boy, they hoorahed me. But when we got to Oklahoma City, it was 17 degrees. <laughs> I was wrapped up. <laughs> had my gloves on. Just laughing. But I guarantee you that next road trip, everybody else had the same thing. <laughs> See, some folks have to learn the hard way. <laughs> Amen. That's right. They have to learn the hard way. See. Amen. Amen. I know that's See, these young ladies here that we're getting ready to read had to learn the hard way, but I'm going to see what God told them. <laughs> Amen. You're going to see what God told them. The father told him this. All right, let's read. Then shall read. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them was wise and five were foolish. Stop right there. Five wise virgins and five foolish virgins. See, guess what? You have the opportunity to grow. And you got Christians the same age as you got opportunities to grow, and they choose not to. Mm -hmm. And you choose to. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even in families, you got two brothers. One brother choose to grow and serve the Lord that was brought up in the same household, and that's one brother choose not to. See, he told you the kingdom of heaven is likened unto ten virgins. They both started, all of them had lamps to start off with. All of them was full of oil. <laughs> Amen. But now notice what verse 33 says. Let us read. They read. They, they were, were foolish, took, took their, their lamps, lamps and took, took no oil with them. But the wise the took oil, their vessels, their vessels and their lamps. Stop right there. See, just because you eat today, guess what? You're going to be hungry tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. See, I try to teach my children. I would go out and buy these little Cheerio boxes. You know, one per day, trying to teach it, one per day to last you the whole week. Now, you can eat them up all in one sitting, but you're going to be hungry the next day. What you going to have? 
And some of them would eat up the Cheerios, eat up every box. <laughs> and one said it. Well, Wednesday come, you ain't got nothing. <laughs> Amen. Trying to teach you physically to. Amen. See, some folks can't think about tomorrow. They just only thinking about right now. I want it right now. That's a careless individual. Amen. See, these wise folks had oil in their lamp and they took extra. Amen. Because they was thinking about the future. All right. Verse 5, let us read. While the bridegroom read. The bridegroom tarried. They all slumbered and slipped. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. 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 With our heads bowed, Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity this morning to fellowship in your holy word. We pray, Father, that you would just continue to enlighten us whereby we may grow and to become that you would have us to be. But we ask it in Christ's name. It's our prayer. Amen. The bread represents Christ's body that was broken. And he said, as often as we do this, do it in remembrance of him. The juice represents the blood that was shed for the remissions of sin. Psalm 66, 18 teaches us if we regard iniquity in our heart, God would not hear our prayer. This is your last opportunity to make sure that you are in fellowship by way of 1 John 1 and 9, assuring that you are in fellowship before partaking of the communion elements. Many take communion out of fellowship, which is out of order. It is important that you are in order and in fellowship with God before partaking of the communion elements. Assuring this, we're going to take this opportunity for prayer, giving you the opportunity to examine your life and to confess any known sins that you may have committed. God said if you do that, and those that you can't remember God say, I take care of that for you. In preparation, let us pray. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, we come this morning thanking you for this opportunity that you've given us to assemble once again to commemorate what your son did for us. 
who satisfied your righteousness. For your righteousness demand punishment for sin. And at the right time in human history, he went to the cross as a substitute for us and took on the sins of the world, removing that sin barrier that has kept us separated from you. And we thank you, Father, what Jesus has done, giving us a right to come to the throne of grace. We ask you, Father, for your mercy as we partake of the communion elements in remembrance of what he done. For we ask in Christ's name is our prayer. Amen. Scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning with verse 23. And it reads, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. And he took the bread, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to them and said, take, eat, for this is my body that was broken for thee. For Christ said, I will not eat of the bread or drink of the cup anymore until I eat it and drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. And he took the bread, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to them and said, take, eat, for this is my body that was broken for thee. So let every man examine himself. He that eateth the bread or drinketh the cup unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to his soul. And he took the bread, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to them and said, Take eat thereof. And he took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink. But this is my blood that was shed for the remissions of sin. So let every man examine himself. He that eateth the bread or drinketh the cup unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to his soul. And he took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to them and said, Take, drink. For this is my blood that was shed. For Christ said, I will not eat of the bread or drink of the cup anymore until I eat it and drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. <clears throat> and he took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink thereof. 